Hello and welcome back to another How To Django 2 tutorial. My name's Tom with Mastercode Online. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to export a CSV file. In the previous tutorial, we showed you how to import a CSV file to Django. Now it's only appropriate for us to show you how to get that data out. All right. Um, so basically, this is very simple. We're going to write a view, a function based view, and a URL, and we'll be able to download a file. All right. Um, before we get started, if you guys have any requests for Django or Python, you want to see something, let me know. I'll be more than happy to show you. Just leave a comment below and we'll help you out. All right, so let's get started. First thing, we're going to need a couple of uh, modules to make this very simple for us. First one is the CSV file uh, module from Python. Next one is going to be HTT, HTTP response from um, Django. It's a shortcut. This will allow us to give a simple response, a um, file response, basically, if you will. Uh, next thing we're going to need is a permission required if you want to password protect your data. So some Joe Schmo can't just download CSVs off your site. So we'll use permission required. And lastly, some kind of model. Uh, we're going to use our contact um, app model. Uh, if you guys didn't do that and want to check out our contact app that I showed you guys how to build, you can go over to our website at mastercode.online. The tutorial is on there. Uh, if not, you can use anything you want. You'll see how simple this is that you can just modify it. All right, so let's get started. We're going to come all the way down to the end here when we're going to write our new view. Um, before we get started with writing our function based view, let's go ahead and password protect it by doing at permission required and then we're going to say admin dot uh, ken uh, underscore add uh, brain fart log entry there we go this only allows the admin and the super user to add the data or access this view i should say not to add the data because we're not adding anything all right so next thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, create our function based view. So we define the function and then we're going to name this contact uh, contact download. So we'll say contact underscore download. All right. And it's going to take one parameter and that's request. So we can handle the request coming from the URL. Now, since we're using HTTP response, we don't need a template or anything like that because we're not going to display anything just when the user visits our our URL, it's going to spit out a downloadable CSV file. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I just got a pretty cool uh, uh, YouTube uh, comment there. I like that. All right. So let's do items is equal to. Um, all right. I completely lost what I was doing because that guy's comment was great. Um, so <laughs> he's like. He's like, your Django tutorials are just unbelievable. So, like, yeah, it makes me feel really great. So, all right. <coughs> um, oh, all right. Back to the tutorial. So, what we're doing here is we need to get all the data from the database. So, how do we do that? We're going to access our model, get all the objects. You guys probably have seen this before because if you're here trying to figure out how to get that off, I'm sure you can display the data. So, you probably use this. So, we're going to have items to represent all our data. So, we'll say contact. All right, and then objects, then dot all. All right, I don't use dot all very often, and it's because I like to restrict my stuff. But since I'm getting all the data, I want all the data to be downloaded. It's when I use all. Um, all right, so <clears throat> next thing we're going to need to do is handle the response. So we'll create a variable called response. All right, and we're going to go ahead and set up the HTTP response. It's kind of like uh, initiating it here. And we're going to set the content type for this response. And we'll say content type. And this is going to be text um, forward slash CSV. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to need to do is set a header called content disposition. And basically what this does is name, we can name our attachment or our file for download. Uh, this is probably smart to do if you have a lot of exported CSVs, maybe name each one a view, or you can get even more technical and say like, hey, uh, name it the date or name it uh, whatever you want, but you can get a little bit more uh, 
there's that comment popping up. All right, there we go. Uh, so you can get a little creative with this if you need to. Um, so let's go ahead and handle this. So we'll say response and then square brackets. And in here, we're going to say content and then hyphen disposition. There we go. Is equal to, and it's equal to a string. We're going to say attachment. Oops, attachment. And then we'll go ahead in here and say whoop, file name is equal to, and we'll say contact, contact.csv. All right, there we go. And that's how that should look. So you close out your string and you got your file name right there. All right. Uh, Let's see, next thing we're gonna to need to do is set up the writer. We need a way to write this file. So we'll create a variable called writer and set that equal to csv.writer. And that's gonna take our response and our delimiter. Uh, response is spelled wrong. And the delimiter is gonna be, hey, we want our data separated by a comma, right? So we should probably set that since this is a CSV or a comma separated uh, file. So limitator like this is equal to a string and then a comma. All right, so next thing we need to do is, um, uh, let's go ahead and create a uh, header for our CSV file so we can label our data. That'd probably be pretty smart, especially if we're kicking out this file and giving it to someone else to work with. Uh, you might wanna go ahead and label your data so uh, these people know what you're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and say writer dot write row and we'll do square brackets first underscore name and comma last name and this is coming from our model and our contact app uh, email uh, IP underscore address and message if you're wondering where IP underscore address came from if you did our contact app but did not do our um, anti-spam app or the spaminator app uh, that's where the IP address is coming from because we actually grab the IP address and block IP addresses from people that like to spam the scum of the earth if you ask me all right so that's where that's coming from all right uh, next thing we need to do since we wrote the header line now we need to write the rest of the lines the way to do that is to iterate through our items um, variable that's holding our data so we'll just say for obj or for object in items and then in here we'll do writer dot right row and we'll inside our parentheses we need square bracket because it's, it's going to be a list and in here we're going to call each piece of data what we want to write what order so we'll say obj dot first name and then comma, then obj dot last name, last name, comma, obj dot email, comma, obj dot IP address, and then lastly, um, obj dot message. All right, so I'll just scroll that up so you can see it over my ugly face. All right, there we go. Um, and then finally, all we have to do is return the response or return response like that. All right, and that's the view. That's all you guys need to do if you wanna create an export of a CSV file. Pretty simple, right? All right, so before we can do that, we need a way to handle the request and the response. How do we do that? Well, we do that with the URLs. So we'll go ahead and create a path. So we'll say path, and then here we'll say download. Uh, let's just call it CSV. All right, and comma, and then we'll say, what do we name this contact underscore download? And we'll give it the same name as our view. So contact underscore download. All right, there we go. So we uh, need to put that up here as well. Contact underscore download. All right, so we got our view built. We got our URL to handle our request and response we go ahead and run our server which mine's already running all right um and then go to our url uh if you guys are not logged in go to your 
forward slash admin. Make sure you log in because we password protected it or however you guys log into your site. Uh, then finally, all we have to do is visit um, download load hyphen CSV. Hit return and notice I get a little uh, little download prompt down here and I click it, open it. Whoa. Well, that is very large. <laughs> uh, yeah. And my mouse will not let me. Well, there you go. You get the idea. We got first name, last name, email, IP address, message, my name, my email address, a little message, uh, another name, another name, my son's name. There we go. All right. That, got, that came in really big and my mouse for some reason will not let me make it smaller. So there you guys go. If you guys have any questions on how to export a CSV in Django, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we do something cool with Django. Have a good day.